Oh, hello. How is everyone? I know a few people are going to be coming on here soon. Uh, if this is your first time, welcome. My name is Gabriel Stockton, and this is Watercolor Wednesday. And the camera's a little off right now, but it's all good. So, you know, um, we're going to talk about you know, this channel, we talk about watercolor, but, you know, everybody's thinking about goals right now, and so sorry for my voice today. Oh my gosh, I'm getting over this weird little throat bug cough thing, but it's nothing serious. Don't worry about it. And, um, but what we want to talk about today, and I'm going to show you this painting I'm working on. It's coming out really well. It's a new subject. And that's something you might want to consider. Hey, let me know who's here. I see some of you sneaking on here. And um, I'll have the chat up so I can see. But uh, hey, welcome. There's more of you popping on here. That's awesome. So for 2024, what goals do you have? Put that in the chat. Um, if you're watching the replay, you know, um, I'm curious. I'm here in my studio right now. I'm curious what you want to learn to paint. I'm here in Balboa Park at Spanish Village in my studio, Studio 34A. And we have beautiful jewelry of uh, Linda's. Joan, hey, Happy New Year's. Yes, Happy New Year uh, from me to you and it's a it's a good time. It's a it's a really great time. Doc Day, what's going on? I heard Doc Ay signed up for our upcoming workshop, and I'll talk about that shortly for all of you that don't know about it. So, um, put in the chat. What are some of the things that you would like to maybe adventure out to paint um, with your watercolors? Uh, I'll be happy to maybe uh, we work on some stuff, you know, this year we did uh, some boats and we did some beaches and bridges and uh, some of you the year before last you wanted to do uh, like some architecture. We did architecture one year, you know, this subject I'm about to show you just here shortly. It's totally new and the wonderful thing about doing a new subject and I hope you can hear me give me a thumbs up or smash that like button um, so that you can hear me um, you know um, it goes to show like in anything that you do if you do something that makes you a little uncomfortable you'll grow now, I'm not telling you to like totally do something completely opposite of what you do. What I'm suggesting is that, you know, if you've been painting landscapes, okay, um, there are other things that you can be doing. Thank you for letting me know that you can hear me. There are other things that you can be painting that can be profitable. Um, it is nice to sell a painting. Now, um, you shouldn't be really necessarily geared to doing um, your artwork for money because the real growth happens when you are passionate about uh, what you're painting. There's a nice little Italy paintings there. Um, so each year I pick something to learn that makes me very uncomfortable. Um, that was um, bird's eye view stuff. So I didn't really share that with anybody last year. And one of the people that really helped me with it was Amit Kapoor. Um, I met Amit Kapoor this year 
uh, sorry, this last year, 2023, in Italy. We became friends. He came out here in California. And with that total amount of time, I got to ask as many questions as possible and ask him if he would demo um, some like bird's eye view stuff. And that was very helpful. Um, I finally did one really just like, boom, knock home uh, painting. And it's not here, poop. Um, Cause I just dropped it off at a gallery yesterday. Uh, but um, I also found a new subject last year because the people that I was teaching didn't want to do boats and beaches and palm trees. They wanted to do barns. They wanted to do covered bridges. Here's a really good covered bridge right over here. Let's see if we can see it right there. Um, we got it. I'm so glad I did because by getting uncomfortable and painting something that I knew nothing about, I did some research. I bought some books. Um, uh, it's called sewing into you. It's investing into you. So, um, I learned boats and bridges last year. And then right at the tape, at the very end of the year, we went to a golf course. Like, whoa. Um, yes. I have painted landscapes. That's what I'm going to show you here shortly. A piece that is about 75% done. Um, but when you step out <laughs> of your comfort zone and you go to a new territory it can be a little wobbly you don't know the codes you know how to you know you know if, for instance if i go down to like pacific beach there's a bunch of cool guys and ladies like on longboard surfboards and so i could probably get away with wearing some shorts and some van shoes and a cool you know t-shirt and you know this hat and fit in and they're like super welcoming like dude bro i love your painting that's great uh, is that for sale and but when you go to somewhere else like a golf course or to someone's um farm and they're looking at you going um you 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 don't look the part, but they see that you have a paintbrush in your hand. You have an art easel. Um, you have your messy paint palette and they're like, oh, artist. You know, um, I had a really interesting um, conversation with a dairy guy. Um, he was a Mennonite. Um, he had like the cute, a uh, family that looked like they were like um little uh prairie what's that what's that the little prairie house what is that show um uh, it was like big in the 70s and 80s uh shoot someone put it in the comments they were like not quakers but country people but they wear the like their little hair bonnet and they wear the old pilgrim clothing and then he had like 13 kids, like, dun, 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 dun. and he came over and he looked at my painting of the barn and he's like, that's, that's nice. Um, and I was painting the back of the barn. So he thought that was a little house in the prairie. That's it. The little house in the prairie. Thank you, doc. I, I knew you would have my back. Um, so, uh, this dude did not paradigm shift change was not he like he couldn't understand why would i paint a barn like and people would buy this barn painting of a barn like why would they want a painting of a barn it was like just not connecting 
And, you know, his kids even looked at me like, whoa, look at those tattoos. And, you know, the dad came over first to see what was going on. And they saw that it had a purpose of being there. Um, and, I, and what was funny was I thought it'd be cute to put these little calves coming out of the back of the barn. And everybody else was like, why would you put those calves coming out of that barn? That's that's where we like load the feed and the hay. There would never be cattle right there. And I was like, what do I know? I'm, I'm here, I'm doing a painting and I'm stepping out of fear. And so uh, long story short, when I got back home, I was super excited about learning about barns. So I bought up some really cool books. Uh, there's a American painter and his book, it's not about, and it's not even watercolor, it's actually oil paintings. And it's from the old timey. So in his book, he doesn't just talk about painting barns. He talks about the type of wood that the barns were used or the type of uh, year or who would help build these barns and why the barn was designed this way. So it was, I still kind of like spend my morning, not every day, but uh, if I don't pick up that phone and start scrolling, I'll open up this book and read. And it's kind of just like some American history, a little bit of and I'm not going, I don't mean to feel like I'm going on a tangent. Okay. I'm just giving you just a feel of what it looks like to investigate into a new subject. And so by setting aside my ego, whatever you call that, or pride, thinking that you have it all together. No, all the other professional artists, they are out there doing the same thing that you will have to do as well. And that's some research and looking at the big shapes and working your way down to the details, okay? And just like this painting I'm about to show you, uh, I first, with this painting, I had to think about all the other paintings I've done prior and it had a landscape and maybe some figures, okay? I've never, I've maybe like sketched um, some like, uh, I've sketched some like sports stuff, but never really painted. And so it's kind of, it's kind of like you're there but until you actually do it, you'll understand it. And it does help that you actually go to the place and be there. Have you ever seen an artist, and I'm not picking on anybody, but have you seen an artist that paints like a picture of like, um, something of Paris, right? We see someone that gets like a really nice calendar uh, photo. Be careful because that's copyrighted. But they paint the exact, it almost looks like paint by numbers. And it also looks flat. And it's because they've not been there. They probably haven't even like even had a pastry from Paris. They've never even like had a meal that's French, you know, or they've, they've, uh, it doesn't mean that, don't get me wrong, it's not that you can't paint that stuff. I'm not telling you, hey, you aren't allowed to paint something that you've been to. But I am telling you, if you go to the place and you at least try. So my first time at this golf course, um, Here's the painting. And I'll give you a little detail shot here shortly. Right now it's um, backwards. So we got this lady. There was these ladies having this competition. 
And this lady is teeing off. And there's this bridge and there's background. And then there was all this wonderful cloud stuff over here. So these ladies, I, it's my first time there, okay? But the owner gave us free room to go wherever. Obviously, I'm not going to set up my easel right where they stand to tee off. So I found me a nice little place, kind of like off to the side. And I kept my mouth shut because I know they're concentrating, right? They don't want someone standing there going, hey, look at me, I'm over here painting you. Like, you got to be reverent. You got to bring a sense of peace. I brought a sense of like excitement. Like, ooh, you might be in my painting. Um, the funny thing was, I was so excited to go paint. I forgot this. Can you believe it? Of all things to forget. So luckily I had um, the new Jane's gray or Jane's black. I think it's the orange black. And I just did a value study painting. And uh, we had our little group circle up. There's a group of us here that go and paint on Thursdays. And they're like, Gabriel, what happened? I was like, would you believe it? I forgot my stinking palette. And they're like, that's a really nice value study. And I'm like, thanks. And um, they're like, uh, good job. Actually, I think I have a photo. And they're like, hey, good job there, but you need to come back and do a colored one. I was like, yeah, right? And, um, you know, one thing if you didn't know, check this out. So if you pull up your photos and you hit search, and if I type in golf, and it's going to give me all the golf photos or the locations of golf courses. So I went to Spring Hills Golf Resort. I'm going to click on that one and now hit see all. There's all the photos that I took while I was there. And um, hey, there we go. So look at that. This is the painting um, that I did. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see if it let me zoom in. I've never done this backwards. All right, let's try this way again. So there's my setup. I got my umbrella. And the other silly thing, guess what happened to me? Oh my goodness. There was ants everywhere. I plopped my bag. I had my bag with all my paper. I had my little case that keeps my umbrella, but I did not bring my palette. What a goofball, right? So, Ants were in everything, my backpack, everything. Luckily, they weren't in my pants. And um, <laughs> so here's my buddy, took a picture of me. There I am, set up. You see where I set up? I set up out of the way. And uh, here's this gal getting ready to tee up, if that's what you call it. Um, it. The sun was trying to come out, but it just wasn't having it. And um, here's everybody else's paintings. We had a really good turnout. I was so happy with, uh... hey Kevin, if you're here or watching the replay, Kevin did a real nice painting. That's Mark's or Kevin's. Oh, Kevin's has got the yellow tape. So uh, here's Gloria's. Gloria might be watching this later. There's a whole bunch of good ones in here. I could go on all day. 
L's, L, a different L. But anyway, um, so am I going to start doing a whole bunch of golf stuff? I don't know. I don't know. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and look at this painting. Dun, dun, dun. Hang in there. So we're going to flip around. And it's freaking out on me because it's not the right orientation. But here we go. Do, do, do. I want to get um, far away from it so you can see. But I don't want to hold it for you. I want to hang in there. Here we go. I'm turning it around so you can see. Sorry about all the other garbage that's in there. I haven't taken the tape off because we are about 75% done. Ah, eh, why not? You can see some of it. So, lots of greens, right? Some of you that are watching. So, this is a 21 inch by 13 and a half. Could someone tell me why I would do it at 21 inches and 13 and a half inches? Well, if you divide it by three, what happens is you have a really nice divisions of three. Now, this is looking nice, but it's not done. There's, there's got to be some more wonderful goodness going on. But we got a sense of what's going on here. Let's zoom in a little bit. And um, there you get to see some light. So you got a really good sense of where the lighting's coming in. You got a good sense of who are the players, who's, who's ready, who's coming up next, who's already teed off. Look, she's already ready. And she's looking to watch and see where it's going. See this body language of... Now, that, of course, I've probably painted someone looking off to the right, standing there. But look at it. She's got her, her uh, club in her hand. Everybody's got their club in their hand. <laughs> I've never put stuff in people's hands like that. I mean, it's... But the one to pay attention to is the one that you actually see the end of the club, right? Simplified, simplified, simplified. So this is stuff, right, I've done in other paintings. Look at that lovely mountain. Look at this cloud. Oh, my gosh. All that stuff has been done in other paintings, but in different colors, okay? Okay. Look at this lovely green. And then this stuff coming here. Look at this circle. Nice elliptical. We got this wonderful. This is this is what I was just finishing up on. It's uh it's got one more thing that goes across here, but I don't know. I think it's nice and simple. But look. This is all abstraction, okay? This in here is just looking at the tonal quality, okay? Let me back out a little bit more. Look at the way this uh, texture makes it look like it slopes down and this is flattened out. Look at the shadow. Look how the shadow just... It looks like a shadow. Uh, some of you took my workshop last year at the beginning of the year here at the San Diego Watercolor Society. And 
we did shadows. Uh, I'm really loving how I played with that mountain coming here and here. Look at that. Your eye just goes here and then boop. We've got these other little things here that's pushing that distance. All that stuff, layering, has been happening in every painting uh, that I've been working on, okay? Um, doing a painting like this. This painting just got back from Thessaloki, Greece. This is not the painting, this is the print, okay? This uh, now just got into the San Diego Watercolor Society. Uh, it's now hanging. It'll be available for purchase starting tomorrow online at the San Diego Watercolor Society. I think it's sdw sdws.org. And uh, but by painting this painting, it helps me to do this painting, which is a totally different subject, okay? Uh, here's some other prints. Um, if you're interested in some of these prints, I did a little video on Instagram. Um, these are all $20, unless you want me to ship it to someone somewhere cray-cray, okay? <laughs> then you will have to pay for the shipping. Look at this, this painting, by doing this boat f painting, okay, um, helped me. Look at this one, this one is Sunset Cliffs, or maybe it's down by the tide pools, but by doing this painting, helped me do this one of golfing. I saw uh, a comment here who just got uh, Coach is on here, uh, Lance, and he has said, who just got on, was that a golfer? Woohoo! Yes, it was, Lance. Um, this is a new subject for me, and I might be working a little bit more on this subject. Uh, Lance has been around where um, I've worked on boats and planes. You know, and you can get yourself a business card. I'm gonna cover up my phone number. But look at this business card. Um, there it shows a wonderful plane. Okay, and then shows me painting. So when I hand out this card, they know that I'm an artist because I'm painting and they see a painting. This is something I enjoy painting as well, the planes. And here's some other things I like to paint. I like to paint boats. I like to paint Europe. And I like to play wonderful historic buildings. And this is a QR code that you can get this is for this channel. Uh, sometimes I switch it up. It's whatever I'm focused on. So for your goal, and I know some of you are, are working at this living as an artist thing. And so pick something that you want to do for your business. And my goal is pick three big rocks, okay? If you pick three big rocks, then you can see what you can focus on. So it helps to have some a little bit of authority by having brand ambassador on there. You have to get these things okayed before you put this on. Escoda, they gave me the logo. They said I'm, uh, I'm allowed to use that on my business card. Okay. So. Um, this uh, woman, uh, she actually came up and wanted to see what I was working on. And she said, oh, hey, I, I go to the Oceanside Museum of Art. And uh, I think I saw your painting there. And I said, yes. 
She said, oh, I love that painting that you did of the overview, bird's eye view of uh, Ocean Beach with the pier and with the cars. And I said, oh my gosh, that was like the hardest thing for me to do. Because last year, like I said earlier, I chose something that was going to make me very uncomfortable to learn. We'll come back on the camera. So I'm just curious, put in the chat, um, what are some things that you're gonna want to do with your, um, I'm willing to open this up into like a little Q and A section, session. And uh, let me know if you'd be interested. I'm, I'm considering this. For the month of February, at the beginning of the month, um, or maybe even at the end of January, doing a Zoom. And let me know uh, in the comments if that's something that you'd like to do, a little Zoom q and A. I I know here... You get to type it, but would you like something like that? It would be free. Uh, we would get together probably this same time, same back channel, uh, but over on Zoom. And uh, what we'll do, you're gonna all odd. What? You've gone all odd. I missed it. Um, so yeah, like if you would like me to do like a zoom where we kind of chit chat and yes, and of course, uh, I will probably be, um, uh, getting ideas from you for this channel and, uh, we'll just be hanging out and, uh, I saw some chat in and out. I can't hear you. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, you know, uh, hopefully the uh, internet is gonna be okay. So um, what are some things that you want to learn how to paint in 2024? So I'll say it one more time. What are some things that you would like to learn in 2024? And this is why I am considering doing a Zoom call because we're having this connection issue. Oh, cool. So, uh, for those of you that are watching this on the replay, uh, we got some things that are coming up. Uh, Lance says he is going to be doing golf. Obviously, love the golf. And uh, we've got Doc Day. She's been working on boats. And historic naval area. Oh, that's cool. Super cool. What else we got here? But yeah, I like boats and the water is great. Yes, and we have the workshop that's coming up that we're doing the harbor scenes. Um, where is that one? We're definitely going to be doing a painting like this. Uh, in February with Cheap Joe's. And uh, the link is at my website. So we're going to be painting something like this. And, uh, you know, uh, I am really looking forward to that workshop. There are going to be some really good times. You know, and uh, here's one other thing to consider about uh, goals. Uh, when you are picking some goals, 
I always say you should do something not just for your art, but something spiritually, something uh, like an adventure, like maybe you've been wanting to drive somewhere, you know? Um, is there like maybe a gallery that you've been putting off that you've been wanting to go see? Um, is there like maybe a new cafe that you should go to and maybe sit down and have a cup of coffee? Um, pick a goal too for your physical uh, health, okay? Um, this month I'm doing the 100 challenge for uh, St. Jude. Um, there's 100 push-ups. Uh, every day for the month of January. They have a Facebook. Um, but yeah, it just started two days ago. Uh, so a spiritual goal, a business goal, a, uh, a goal where you're going to maybe uh, start a new um, ritual. Like a good one would be maybe when you wake up in the morning, don't go right to your phone. And, um, oh, my wife said, there's a problem. Let's go for a walk. Let's go outside. So, uh, St. Jude is a hospital for children. So the push-ups and everything is for children, awareness for children. So, no, it's not breast cancer. It's a children's hospital. And um, we're gonna go outside. Hopefully it doesn't rain on us. Here we are. Another goal you should consider is, uh, is it time for you to find a new place to show your art? Um, you should have um, a gallery within 50 miles, and then you should find a gallery outside of 50 miles, okay? And start considering possibly something outside of the US. You don't have to get cray cray. Um, <laughs> and I know we got some people on here that are already outside of the US. So you should maybe try to enter a show. Matter of fact, we actually have an exhibit that just opened up for entry. And that is the National Watercolor Society is having their member show. It's online, so you don't have to ship your painting. So you might want to consider joining the National Watercolor Society and entering their show. Let's see if you can see this cloud up here. Oh my gosh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I said, oh my gosh. So yeah, we're out in front of the studio. Hopefully the connection's better. And by the looks of it, it looks like some people dropped off, but I know this will be um, fine when I go ahead and upload it. So one other thing, a goal that you should consider. So we said a health goal a ritual. Another good ritual is maybe get up in the morning and drink two glasses of water before you have that cup of coffee. You know? Um, a health goal for your physical health. Maybe some exercise. Oh, I'm so sorry. And um, we will have a better connection next week. Uh, one other goal. So watch the replay. The replay. The replay will have everything. The other goal is a financial goal. And you want 
to accomplish something. Finances is not my favorite topic, but it has to be looked at, right? So consider a financial goal and make that happen. And one way of starting your art business is by treating it like a business. Maybe you need to have a business license. Just find out what that looks like in your country or your city. Okay? Um, and the last thing, try to get more painting time in. Okay? If you have to schedule it, if you have to buy a planner, go for it. Well, I appreciate everyone. This one is short today because looking at your goals is more important. Sometimes it's not about making that next painting. Sometimes it's about making a plan. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. Look at the painting one more time. There it is. Have a wonderful day. And whatever you missed, what we're going to do is watch this on the replay. All right. Have a wonderful day. Keep those brushes wet. Take care. Bye.